awesome guys. So we're lucky enough today to have Gareth along and obviously I use a knife a lot. So making a good knife is really important and Victory Knives do such a good job at it. I thought we'd bring him along and actually have a conversation a little bit more about the technical aspects of what makes a good knife. So we've got a bunch of really awesome knives from Victory Knives here. So obviously the first thing for me Gareth is asking a little bit about the story and how Victory Knives started and then also the difference between making a good knife and a great knife. Well, uh, Victory's uh, a New Zealand owned business and we've been New Zealand owned since 1927. Um, there's actually only been four owners um, of the company in that last 97 years, which I'm lucky enough to be one of and, um, and a business I'm really passionate about. I think that the question around what makes a knife a knife in terms of quality is, is steel and the treatment of the steel. How do you get it to the right hardness to be um, able to hold an edge but also to take an edge? So um, our process of, at Victory is, is like, you know, Nana's old cake, we haven't changed it for a number of years. Yep. Um, we bring in steel from Germany, it's the same manufacturer of steel who do all of the other major brands that you might see um, in the meatworks or in a butcher shop. Um, we bring it into Victory and then it's the treatment process that we give it from there to try and get the right hardness of steel um, yep. to, to obviously make a, a good quality knife. Awesome, so how, how important is that hardness? So hardness is kind of everything, so you're changing the microstructure in the steel. Uh, we heat it up to 1050 degrees for 20 minutes in our forge. We're only doing two and a half kilos of steel at a time. Every single knife is actually fully heat treated from the tip of the knife to the tang, which is inside the handle, um, and very much tested all the way through to make sure that it's within the range that we're looking for. Um, any problems uh, from a QC point of view, always because of, is generally always because of heat treatment. Awesome, awesome. And when we look at the knife roll down here, we've obviously got a couple of different handles. So if we pull a couple out, we've obviously got the Pro Grip style handle, um, and then we've got, say, more our groove knife handle, or a little dotted handle that we've got here. What's the difference between those, mate? So the original Victory handle, I guess, is the white 115 with the, the dimples or the, or the bumps on it. Um, generally used on the slaughter boards or all the more messy environments um, where there's a lot of fat um, and gives a slightly bit better grip and these days obviously most people are, are wearing gloves um, as well so um, it, that's, a, that's a safety aspect for the specific job for those knives. The Pro Grip uh, is more for the boning side of things for a bit more feel um, and the handle for more intricate cuts and movements. So. Um, two different handles um, to, to cover those two areas. I've also brought along three identical shaped boning knives, uh, the five inch boning knives with three different flexes in the steel. So you've got your, your regular with the, or stiff, so not much movement. Um, the three 720, which is semi-flex, a bit more flex in the blade. And then the five 722, which is a super flex. So you can really start to see that movement in the blade. Again, it's personal preference for people. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've made these knives based on what customers ask for. I, I've got a mantra that, you know, we're the manufacturer, you're the user. So we yeah. are really keen on listening to, to what people um, are asking for. And to that, um, to that point, there's also a couple of the home kill guys' favorite knives here. So these are the ribbing knives. Um, so with the ribbing knives, the original ribbing knife, this one's got a hollow ground in it, the 204. That's the one-stop shop for the home kill guy. He's yep. he's he's gutting, skinning, and breaking into four quarters with this knife. Um, we developed the XL ribbing knife um, specifically for the New Zealand home kill guys because they're dealing with some bigger beasts yep. and longer strokes down the side to speed their job up. Um, and then moving through into a breaking knife, um, the bullnose butcher knife, which is commonly used. Um, another option to the steak knife here. This is a, a recent release, the 30 centimetre steak knife, and again, that's just out of demand from customers, uh, specifically in the UK, wanting a slightly larger steak knife. Yep. And then just with the popularity of barbecue these days, and I guess relevance today, we've got a brisket knife slash ham knife, so good for the ham off the bone yep. at Christmas time, but obviously great for cutting up your, your big yeah, cuts yeah, of meat. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, a lot of people always ask me, what do I actually use a cleaver for? Um, and is it just a sentimental piece? But what I'm finding with the cleaver, it's actually really, really good um, for breaking up your chicken cuts. So if you are wanting to break up through any soft bones, um, it's also really good for doing things like your lamb loin chops, where we're actually jointing through those cuts. So same with the pork loin chops, it's when we start to get to our bigger, thicker animals like our beefs, our venisons, it does become a little bit harder, but we can actually double up and use this as a splitting knife. So it's really good for going down the backbones of our sheep if you're controlled with it, getting it nice and straight. 
but it can be used for a lot of things. It isn't just a piece that you hang on the hang on wall. I guess it's um it's it's a it's a very usable piece of equipment. Yeah, and a not and a knife that I'm super proud of, James. This um, 97 years to make our first cleaver. Yeah. Um, it's 870 grams, five and a half mils of German steel. Um, with the victory process and the scales on our uh, New Zealand natural native hardwoods that we've got which have been um, been recycled into into the handles so yep. like all victory knives they're not designed for the mantelpiece they're designed to get dirty so um, this is certainly another example of that. I hope that we covered off any questions that you might have had leading into this video if you guys want to check out any of the victory knives that we use today head over to www.victoryknives.co.nz you can purchase anything online thanks again for watching guys appreciate it